Good morning, everybody, or afternoon or evening, depending on what part of the day it is you're watching this video. But welcome to part two of module one in our radiation biology course. We are going to go over how radiation interacts with tissue and help describe or even categorize the different processes that occur between radiation interaction, cellular response, and overall biological response to that radiation interaction. So our objectives are just that. We want to be able to describe the types of interaction and the types of damage that occur in cells, and then be able to categorize what type of processes are happening in the cells from the point of radiation interaction to the final point of response of the biological system. We are going to talk about two types of radiation interactions with tissue, with matter. Uh, number one, excitation, is when radiation transfers energy to an atom and elevates the electrons of the atom to a higher energy state, but no electrons are actually ejected or removed from the atom. Uh, that's opposed to ionization, in which the radiation transfers enough energy to actually eject one or more electrons from the atom. It's this ionization interaction that we are going to talk about in this talk today. So we are focused on ionizing radiation. Uh, to illustrate that, we have our atom. The radiation interacts with that atom and ejects an electron from that atom. So that creates a free electron that moves about the tissue, as well as leaving behind a positive ion. So the types of ionizing radiation we're concerned with, uh, we categorize as directly ionizing. So this would be charged particles, electrons, protons, alphas, heavy charged particles. And they cause ionization of atoms as they interact on their way through tissue. Um, and that's opposed to indirectly ionizing radiation interactions. So that is uncharged particles, X-rays, gamma rays, neutrons. These particles will actually interact with the atom, release an electron or um, nucleons from the nucleus. And it's these secondary particles that actually pass through the material and create most of the ionizations. illustrate this, uh, let's consider we have our directly ionizing and indirectly ionizing radiation. So directly ionizing, what we're really saying is these charged particles pass through our material, through our tissue, and they're creating ionizations all the way through the material, uh, creating these secondary electrons. These secondary electrons run off, create their own ionizations, where for indirectly ionizations such as x-rays here. The x-ray will come in and scatter off of a single atom um, or could be photoelectrically absorbed by a single atom. That will eject an electron and it's really the secondary electrons ejected by the x-ray interaction that goes off and produces all the ionizations that occur in the tissue. So it's a subtle difference, but it's the difference that is often noted and how we will refer to things today. Now that we have these two types of ionization events that occur, let's talk about what types of damage those ionization events can cause. So we basically have two types of damage caused by these ionizations that we'll talk about today. Uh, the first being direct damage and this occurs when the ionization of an actual biologically sensitive molecule occurs. So the radiation ionization ionizes that molecule, that atom in that molecule directly. The second being indirect damage. So this is a case when the radiation ionizes a molecule nearby to our biologically sensitive molecule, DNA in our case, so it ionizes this nearby molecule. That creates free radical uh, ions and free radicals. Those ions and free radicals diffuse over into the vicinity of the biologically sensitive molecule and cause chemical damage. 
to that molecule. So let's start with direct damage. In a sense, the x-ray here, in our case, we'll call it an x-ray that's um, interacting. An x-ray interacts directly with an atom in the DNA molecule. So that causes an ionization of that atom. And through further realignment and repair, breaking of molecular bonds occur after this ionization. So we've da directly damaged the DNA, and that damage could then, in turn, lead to some biological effect. Then for indirect damage, uh, the process is a little more complicated. So in this case, our x-ray interacts with an atom. It creates our free electron through the ionization process. And this free electron can then interact and create an ion radical. This ion radical then interacts, creating free radicals. And these free radicals then attack our biologically sensitive molecules, DNA, and create damage, create molecular bond breaks within the DNA, which then can lead to biological effects. Looking at indirect damage a little closer, let's start with our x-ray interaction. So our x-ray interacts with an atom. That produces our free electron through the ionization process. That free electron can interact with a water molecule, ionizing that water molecule and creating another free electron. Or let's say the x-ray interacts directly with a water molecule. It ionizes that water molecule, creating a free electron, plus our charged water ion. So this water ion is what's called an ion radical because it's a charged molecule with an electrical charge, plus it also has an unpaired electron in it. These free radicals with a free electron are highly reactive and are what causes a lot of this indirect damage to DNA molecules. So let's look at our water ion radical. It would diffuse through our cell, interact with another water molecule, creating in this process the hydroxyl radical. This hydroxyl radical is highly reactive and highly damaging to DNA. So it's often thought that a lot of the damage caused to DNA by x-rays happens through the hydroxyl radical. So we've had direct or indirect damage occur in our DNA through ionizations caused by radiation. So our DNA is damaged. What happens next? So we've broken molecular bonds within the DNA because of our ionization. What that results in basically is molecular bond breaks in the DNA, right? So if you have one damage site where you've broken a molecular bond, this is called a single strand break. And this could be a molecular bond break in the DNA backbone or a bond break in the base pair of the DNA. If you have more than one molecular bond break within close proximity to another one, say within a hundred base pairs or so, that's what's considered a double strand break. So you have multiple molecular bond breaks close in proximity to each other. And these types of breaks are much more difficult for the cell and for the DNA to repair. So they cause much more of a biological effect after they've occurred. So we have these double strand breaks in our DNA. Let's say what does exactly happens if the cell cannot repair that damage, what this does is it causes an interruption in cell division. The cell can no longer divide successfully because the genetic material is damaged. So when this happens, this causes the cell to sort of enter an automatic pre-programmed cell death cycle. Um, this can be through the apoptosis method or pathway. It can be through what's called autophagy, uh, cell sentience, mitotic catastrophe. There's several different pathways within the cell that are pre-programmed that this cell will enter and go through in a way of basically dying off after this damage. Um, if the damage can be repaired, but it's incorrectly repaired by the cell, this results in what's called a gene mutation. Um, this improper repair 
um, if the cell is actually able to divide after this mutation occurs, could lead to hereditary effects within the organism uh, in the years to come. Now, let's uh, visualize these damage processes a little bit. So for direct damage, what we see is the radiation passes through, ionizes an atom within the DNA molecule itself, causing the molecular break, so it directly damages the DNA. Um, indirectly, so a particle could be passing through, ionize a molecule close to the DNA, um, this then creates the hydroxyl radical, which uh, diffuses towards the DNA, attacks the DNA, causing the molecular bond break. Um, now it's worth noting, I showed direct damage to be caused by a direct ionization. I also showed indirect damage to be caused by an indirect ionization. Now, that is not necessarily the only case. So a direct damage can occur by an indirect ionization. So an X-ray ionizes an atom. The secondary electron damages the DNA molecule directly. So that would still be direct damage. Where, on the other hand, um, a particle could ionize a water molecule um, directly that then uh, diffuses, causing the production of a hydroxyl radical, which attacks the DNA, causing indirect damage. So direct damage can be caused by direct or indirect ionization. And co conversely, indirect damage can be caused by indirect or direct ionization. Okay. So we've talked about ionization, we've talked about our damage caused by these ionizations. So let's just give a brief overview of how we can categorize these different processes um, that occur within cells and within DNA during irradiation. So if we look at our direct and our indirect damage, these are caused by x-ray interactions or the actual interaction of the radiation with the cell, with atoms inside of the cell. These processes uh, we would refer to as physics processes. So this is a physical interaction that's occurring. The free electron is released. The free electron travels off through the cell, interacting, causing physical interactions of the electron within the cell. These are all physical processes. So we would define that type of process as a physics process. And these will happen on the order of 10 to the minus 19 to 10 to the minus 15 seconds, extremely fast, less than a picosecond, somewhere around the autosecond range, so faster than you can ever imagine. After these physical processes occur, then we start to see chemical changes occurring, so changes within the chemical and molecular environment. Um, this is the production of ion radicals that diffuse and interact that produce free radicals. These free radicals then attach themselves, uh, change the molecular bonding structure of other molecules, uh, damage DNA. All of these processes we would categorize as chemical processes. These are chemical changes occurring as a result of that physical interaction. So these tend to happen much, much slower, relatively speaking. So on the order of nanoseconds up to maybe tens of microseconds, uh, these chemical changes are occurring after an interaction. And then finally, after these chemical changes occur, then the cell takes over. The cell starts trying to repair itself to change and overcome the damage caused by the physical interactions and by the chemical changes that were occurred. And these changes will occur within minutes, hours within a cell as it tries to repair itself um, to the years, days, months, years that occur over the cell cycle, and even going out into decades when you start talking about what type of hereditary effects may be caused by these interactions in the long term. So those are all what we would consider biology. This is the biological process that's occurring as a result of that initial physical interaction of the radiation. 
So that's basically a, a very broad overview of how radiation interacts with, with cells and with the DNA within cells. So just as a quick review, we start with, with our radiation interactions and we define direct interaction or direct ionization and indirect ionization that different types of radiation causes. Um, these ionizations lead to direct or indirect damage, according to was it the radiation itself that caused the damage or the secondary uh, molecular components caused by the chemical reactions that cause the molecular damage to DNA. Um, we talk about this in terms of single strand and double strand breaks within the DNA. And then we talked about, okay, what's the broad scientific category for each of these types of interactions? We go from a physical interaction of the radiation to the chemical reaction of the mo molecules, the molecular environment of the cells, to the biological response of the cellular re repair process and the downstream biological results to the organism that occur. So that's sort of the end of our module one. We've gone through some very broad overviews of the radiation biology process. And each one of these things we've talked about will be filled in and we'll be giving a lot more detail over the course of this course on these specific types of ionization, the specific types of chemical processes and the specific types of biological effects that occur within the cells due to radiation. So I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you later in our further modules.